Hi Neil, who's here. Uh, is there an easy way to upload my own quiz for live? That's the only way. One by one typing. Nah, it's not the only one. Uh, you can actually, you can accelerate that a great deal by using uh, a macro recorder. Now that might sound scary. Don't be scared by it. Have a look at Tiny Task. I have nothing to do with them. It's just something I've looked up and uploaded for help facilitating me get things done quicker, or at least enabling me to let the computer do the things while I go do other things. And it will reduce the task of putting questions into your speed quizzing database uh, to a fraction of the previous time. Let's go through it for you and show you what I'm doing. And hopefully you can take it up. Trust me, it will save you a lot of time. Well, the first thing you need is uh, any macro builder, but I use tiny task. It's small, it's efficient, it's very light and it's very simple. Uh, there are more complex ones you can use. You can use paid for versions, but this seems to do the trick and I'll demonstrate why. So I've got here my question database. There's loads of questions in and here's a question database I prepared earlier. And you can see that the questions are sorted out, ready to go into a set, this is set 18. And we'll take the middle of the set. So this is the bee's knees. Uh, what I do, you can vary your own method yourself, but I'll go through it very clearly. Uh, well, so I'll go through what I do anyway. First off, I'm making the questions and the answers a consistent size. So you can do that by sliding, like so. But I'm going to make um, a column width. I'm going to make it three centimeters. There you go. And that's picking you more up. And now I'm going to make the color at uh, the question uh, the row height the same i'm not going to do millions of them today so we'll just go for row height three i'm using calc but you can use excel it will do exactly the same thing so you can see here that the questions and answers are in very similar boxes to keep things consistent now i'm reducing the size of this window and <laughs> conveniently it's gone straight into the corner size i use normally now, there's a couple of things to notice about this. First thing is, we can see the third column. What that means is when you flick between the answer and the question, they stay in the same place relative to each other. If the third column wasn't visible or further, every time you pressed on the second column, the question would leap across. And I don't want that to happen. So that's set wide. Now you can say, well, how inconsistent is Steve Kidd? Very, because you can see that the second row is cut off because I want that to leap up. I want, every time I click in there, the question to jump up. So the next question becomes available. If you haven't got that available, it doesn't jump up to the top of the table. It moves to the second row and then you're in the row, whatever. So we can see we're good to go. We can see the first question, what we're aiming at. Now, normally what we'd do is we'd upload the, uh, we'd get to the speed quizzing site, uh, which is here. We go to question manager, which is there. And we'd carry on from where we left off because I, uh, no, I don't want that there. There's one we prepared earlier. Uh, yes, I want to do that. I don't want those on anymore. You will see that later. I've done this before. <laughs> Bugging it up. So normally, let's put the window so we can read our questions and see what we have available. The normal process is this. We'd go for a new question. We'd either write it or we'd cut and paste it. Cut and paste is a good idea. Cut, I've pressed, I've clicked on the box, press Control C, good shortcut for cut, which if you didn't know what you do now, uh, and pressed Control V for paste. So I'm gonna do the same with the answer. I click in the answer box, press Control C simultaneously, which has picked up Decker. Then I move to the answer box in the speed quizzing builder, Press Control V, it puts it in there. 
all that remains to do now, because the speed quiz are automatic to put the D in there for your answer, uh, save the changes. And lo and behold, we have a question ready to go into a keypad round. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with building the keypad rounds. I will, if you're not, anyway, let's go through the process. Click on the open for a new keypad round. And we have a new keypad round there. And at the moment we're in it, it's got no questions in it. Go back to the organizer on the tab there. And as Alan Leach will tell you, you can fuck about with the question and then pop it middle for diddle and it's in the keypad round. And look, we've got a round of one question, but we want a round of 20 questions. So I use rounds of 30 questions. And you can go through that process. Cut, paste, cut, paste, save, cut, paste, cut, paste, save, new question, cut, paste, blah, 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 blah. And then they all go in the wrong order and stuff like that. Whatever. Let's do that automatically. Explore yourself if you wish, but otherwise get tiny task. It's free, it's light, it's brilliant. Open tiny task up. Do I need a double click? I think I do. There you go. It's appeared there. Let's move it away. <laughs> now, forget the first icon. Forget the second save icon. This is the critical one. This is record. The middle item is record on this little, what have you, what do you call it? This little window. So I'm going to move straight along and record me doing a question. Now, press record and go through the process. New question. Click in your question you want. Control C for copy. Transfer it. Control V. Paste. Go back to the question. Go to the answer. Press Control C. Press Control V. When you've got the answer in the right place. And save the changes. It's there. Now, note to self, click on the next question. And that's ready to go. Meanwhile, go back over to the question with your cursor, middle for diddle, and in she goes. Yeah, I know, there's two of the same question in there. And then back to teeny task and stop it recording. Now what you've got there is you've got a macro built into there which will repeat every motion you've made. And if everything's in the same place, it will do the same things. I'm gonna demonstrate that now because I'm going to click on this arrow here, which is the play arrow, and then I'm going to let go of the mouse. I'm not touching the mouse now. The macro recorder has taken it over for me. And there you go. Tomorrow belongs to me. I went a bit slow on that, but it doesn't matter because the thing about the macro recorder is you leave it alone. And the faster you make the macro, the faster it will operate. And I'm sure that you can actually alter the time as well. But why bother? Go out, go for a walk, take some air. Time is not at a premium at the moment. And there you have a click up to the next question. Don't forget to click up to the next question. And you've got Three questions in your database. Uh, now, you're going to think, well, you still got to click that macro every time. No, you don't have to click the macro every time. Because what happens is, in this column here, this little, this last icon, this toolbox icon on tiny task, you have some options. And one option is, one, two, three, four down, set the repeat count. Now, if you've got 30 questions waiting, put 30 in there. Don't put more than 30 in. The maximum speed quitting will hold is 32 at a time. Don't ask me why, but it's sufficient. It'll do. I prefer it if it was 100, but whatever. Uh, I'm going to do it three times because it could be three, it could be 30, but three will demonstrate to you what's happened. I'm happy with the playback loops there. I want that macro to repeat three times. And uh, have a look.
have a quick look round. It, everything seems hunky dory. So off we go. Now I've let go of. I've clicked the play button with my mouse, and now I've left the mouse alone. Now I'm moving the table out of the way, and I'm going to make a cup of coffee, or I'm going to do whatever I want to do for the next X minutes, however long it takes to do this. The critical thing is you can leave it alone. There are some things you've got to be careful of. I don't think colons and semicolons are a good idea in questions. I have a, had it hang a couple of times on a question and get stuck in the same place, which is awkward. Also, if you go for uh, more than 30 questions, it will put the questions in, but it just won't save them properly. And you have to press, uh, you have to search for the questions or do them all again. You can see the search box. I'm not going to point to it because the macro's busy at the moment, so I'm not going to interfere with my computer. But look at this. Don't forget, quite often you'll be making a database question and you'll get a question like this which is coming up. Uh, <coughs> the question will be, what does AOL stand for? Well, I occasionally put a speed question in like that. What does the A in AOL stand for? Keeps people on the toes. But... Uh, you might want to enter, alter your questions around a bit, but that's your your thing with your database of questions or your spreadsheet of questions. Uh, the spreadsheet you use, it could be Excel. I personally use a Calc, a LibreOffice Calc. It's free, and in many ways it's better than Excel. You can format the rows to a nicer, nicer size, uh, and it's kind of quicker at sorting the strings of words out and things like that. So I would recommend LibreOffice. I would recommend uh, Tiny Task uh, and everything else. Speed quiz and of course you'd recommend speed quizzing, especially speed quizzing live. It's wonderful. It's free. I'd recommend my quiz at 5.30 every day, but I don't want too many people in there because I like it nice and intimate and I like to know who I'm talking to. Uh, so keep up the good work. Uh, we're not finished this yet because we're going to go to the set and have a look at it. I think that might be finishing. Uh, is it finishing now? Is it putting one more question in? It's putting Manfred Mann on the Guinness Flint into the set. Please be the last one and I can stop talking. I can stop talking. That looks like it has finished. There you go. So. If you'd put 30 in the repeat count, or 27, because there were three questions there already, you could, like I say, you can go away. You can see that each individual question takes a minute or so to do. It still takes that time, but you can leave your computer while it does it. So that's a time-saving facility for you. Uh, have a check on the questions, and you can see that, oh, we've got the two deckers in there. Let's get rid of one of those. A deliberate mistake. Five questions, and then we go through the normal process of exporting the selected round. I'm not going to export the selected round. One thing which uh, is to bear in mind is that whenever you put a round in, it stays there forever. And so if we have a look at this, you can see it kind of clutters up a little bit. Let me press Control plus and uh, let's see if we can increase the size of this. Uh, there we go, yeah. So let's look at these and see what I've got here. Here's all the rounds I've put in earlier. You can see I do one every day of 30 questions. We have a really nice time at half five. And uh, we have got the set 18 there. I'm going to open that so you can have a look at, here's the set I made earlier. And you can see that we have a lovely set of 30 questions which are all in there and ready to go. I thought that was set 18. I've just been looking at but it wasn't. Yes, you have there, look, you go. You can see these questions we've dealt with. And basically, that's about the size of it. The two things to remember are consistent spreadsheet formatting or consistent word formatting, as long as they're the same distance apart, as long as you can do a very repetitive sequence of keystrokes or buttons you're good to go with tiny task macro i can repeat that macro again providing everything is in the same place but i've adjusted the sizes so it's not but it's an easy enough process to do the first question like so 
and then let the macro take care of it. The buttons to remember are not the first, not the second. The record button you need to use once to start it and once to stop it. The play button and this lovely repeat count on the toolbox there. They're the only three buttons you need to concern yourself with. I hope that's not been too long winded for you. I hope you can actually develop it. It's a bit like driving a car. Once you can press the clutch and brake, you think, well, how could I ever not do it? But it's a complex process at first. I'm going to shut that down there. I'm going to open this back up there. And I'm going to, hopefully, go back to this. And I'm going to send you the film. <laughs> Cheerio.